It's Mimi Chen for AZAM News. Recently, the Smithsonian Asian Pacific American Center honored the jazz fusion band Hiroshima with the Legend Award in Music. We got to talk to Dan Kuramoto of the band about what that award meant for them, their 40 years in music, and also how to properly pronounce the name of the band. Now, one thing that I've always wondered is the correct way to pronounce the name of your band. Um, I can only tell you that uh, you know, the bands uh, came out of a concept, and the name, uh, we were not actually 100% sure being, you know, uh, um, most of us Japanese born in America, although the band's never ever been even all Asian. Uh, but oh. um, So I first tour in Japan, uh, we uh, part of that tour, we were uh, representatives of the then mayor of Los Angeles, Mayor Tom Bradley, and mm -hmm. the cities that we visited, um, we were presenting things to the mayors of various cities. So when we got to the city of Hiroshima or Hiroshima, you know, depending on you, how you pronounce it, we asked the mayor, like, well, how, how do you say it? You know, how do you pronounce it? And he says, actually, it's sort of um, tomatoes and tomatoes. So he, he <laughs> says, depending upon, no, really, he says, depending upon the area in Japan, it might be pronounced differently. So some have a hard O, Hiroshima, right? And I know uh, for us, uh, uh, probably the radio that has built and sustained our career, um, on black radio, has always pronounced the name Hiroshima. You know, and uh, we in the band uh, tend to, to pronounce it uh, Hiroshima. Uh, so it's, it's, it's te technically it's both. And in and, and our, <laughs> and, 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 and our situation, we're just uh, you know, pleased that people uh, acknowledge it at all. So it's cool. Have things changed from when you first began? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, most definitely. And, and thank goodness, I mean... We have a very long ways to go, but you know the journey has uh, re really more than begun. I, you know, I think about well, for example, you know, uh, last year, Crazy Rich Asians had an enormous impact uh, in entertainment, mostly in terms of the pocketbook, because mm -hmm. there's you know the, the realization because it's America. I mean, it's the nature of capitalism you know, um, that there is money to be made with Asians. And, but then, you know, many, many years before that, decades, it was Flower Drum Song. Oh, and to me, very long time to, ago. Yeah, and, and, you know, but and both of which featured tremendous Asian casts that were, that were com amazingly talented. Now, why did that not kick in with Flower Drum Song and why is Crazy Rich Asians, you know, suddenly... And Joy Luck Club was very successful, too. It, yeah, but and, and that and that fell in, in between. Mm -hmm. But, and, and to me, it's, it's really kind of boils down to, like, you know, with, this, with Crazy Rich Asians, we got the sense that, we're, you know, we're beginning the process of defining ourselves from our own point of view. You know, from beginning to end in terms of the production. Where if you go back to Flower Drum Song, you know, even though these were all Asian generated stories, the way that they were interpreted was generally interpreted by the industry, which is generally white. But as, you know, as we have progressed, I'd like to use that word, and hopefully, you know, by the time we got to Crazy Rich Asians, you know, we saw a lot of talented people. Uh, uh, and the story may not have been that deep, but it seemed like it was from our POV, our point of view, you know. And I think it's sort of that sense of being able to take control of who we are and how we are viewed that I think has been the, this process, you know. And and for from where we come in, when we mm -hmm. started, the band really. Uh, in the 60s, late 60s, the, the notion of it was to try to create a perception of us that is real, 
Not one that's splendid, not one that's over the top, but just real. Because we didn't, again, we were dealing with being either invisible or being a caricature. How did it feel to be one of the front runners as an Asian artist? We had no lane to fall in when we started out. So, Mm -hmm. you know, and our whole point of view was that we can do some good if we exist. So this is to say, you know, there was no yardstick. But if we exist and we are our our own true nature, (laughs) you know, as as the collective of of people that compose the group, that somehow that, that would create a voice and a statement in and of itself that would, you know, supersede the notion of invisibility or supersede the caricatures that were being played out. And so we thought if we could do Uh that, you know, that in in some ways some good will come of it, and that would actually be cool. That That would be kind of good enough. You know, obviously, the you know, the trick was to do it as well as we could, Mm-hmm. And in a world where, uh, as one black record executive told me, he said, hey, man, there's one situation where you wish it was black. Black radio, black executives, you know, other people of color have supported the band throughout our career as much or more than other Asians have because they know what, how important it is to this country, how important it, we are to each other, that all of us have a voice. So do you find more interest in Asians now because of of the emphasis on inclusivity? Well, it's 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 hard to measure in our industry, in the music industry in particular, though it's creating a sense that the mix is larger and continues to grow and that mix is really part of the humanity of this country that we keep we, we that we struggle to stay on board with you know, because perpetually, you know, we have issues with, you know, you know core racism and and core greed in this country. And so our musical heart is always about, you know, that humanity and, and, and finding a place to be inclusive at all times mm-hmm. in this country and to grow that notion. And I know it seems awfully altruistic, but if you're going to be, you know, a band that's less than a generation for from people that were all put in prison camp in this country. And then you're going to deliberately name the band Hiroshima, despite everyone telling you, especially the record companies and people in Japan, that that's a horrible name and that only will threaten people and that if you have that name, then you will never be able to sell records or or perform in Japan or have, have a record deal or tour in the United States. You know, but we said, hell no. I mean, this is who we are, and this is what we're going to do. And again, as I said earlier, as long as we're st- upright, as long as we're doing what we do, we feel there is no yardstick. We Just by do- by our existence, you know, we are demonstrated on one level our right just to be, you know, the Asian Pacifics that we happen to be and that we have a place on this planet and uh, and and a worthy voice in this country. So how did it feel to be perhaps the lone Asian musical voice and how does that compare to today? Well, we had a lot of support. You know, again, you know, and and it started, you know, uh and has always been with the black and latino communities. And then it, it always has been certainly with our own Asian communities. I mean, we played every, you know, uh, every community event in, in, in Southern California, you know, that existed. We did, uh, uh, one of the, our early band members says, like, you know, we are the ultimate freebie band because we did every benefit for every community event that in, that occurred for probably a decade. And, 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 we did it with great joy, you know, whether it was, if it was for uh, uh, Japantown or Chinatown or Koreatown or, or a little Filipino town or, you know, if it was for uh, uh, Samoan events or whatever else it is. Because these are our people. You know, we're, we're trying to spread the word of our own collective nature, you know, the, and, and to create our own power base 
of humanity. And so it, it, it was easy. That's, that's what we're supposed to do. And, and in every situation, we learned a great deal. So, so that was part of our evolution. And for us, where it all connected was that, you know, and, and to this day I'll never quite understand how, but what turned the switch for us was black radio. Because white radio would never have played us. But black radio has always been, and I don't know if people are aware of this, open to if they think it's hip, they'll play it. I know that you've won many awards, so how do you feel about this recognition from the Smithsonian? Well, it's an extraordinary honor, you know. It, and for us, it just, it, it's just, what is it all about? Mm-hmm. You know, and because I think about the Smithsonian, which, you know, I've loved going to since I was a kid. You know, air and space, every little boy dug that, right? I remember there was once the um, the exhibit on 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 the camps on the the prison camps like mans and I like my 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 family was put in and stuff like mm-hmm. that and and that and I thought that was a wonderful exhibit I wish it was part of a a permanent collection that was part of a uh an Asian American wing you know uh right I know they're trying to fundraise a permanent collection uh, right so I mean to that end you know uh you know we support it you know, more than a hundred percent, and and to be honored somehow in in uh, in this process is uh, a little surreal for us, you know. But um, um, you know, we we hope that you know we can be part of something that moves toward that recognition, because you know our our people deserve it, because our people are America. Have you ever thought about using your voice politically? We don't always think about it in heavy political terms, you know. We're just there with that, you know. But because at the, <laughs> at the end of the day, we're like having a good time and love mm-hmm. and loving our family and our kids and our girlfriends and our boyfriends and our parents and our grandparents, you know, and the brother next door and on and on and on, you know. And and, and those are the stories we tell with our music. Sometimes with lyrics, sometimes with instrumentals. I, you know. June wrote a song called A Thousand Cranes that on our website, which is uh, HiroshimaMusic.com. Yes, that's a shameless plug. But, uh, you know, uh, you, you want people will want to go there because we have recipes, because Asians know food. And, and over the... <laughs> really? Over the, okay. Oh, 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 you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, yeah. we are all about food. And so, uh, and over the years... We always either have lunch or dinner together whenever we rehearse, whenever we record. Nan Kuramoto of the band Hiroshima. He says in spite of all the Lifetime Achievement Awards, they still will continue doing what they've always done, which is to make music and joy, and also to represent the Asian American community. For AZAM News, I'm Mimi Chen.